so leise. Er hält es nicht richtig. Ich habe das Glück, dich zu begrüßen, Daniel Lacamera. Daniel ist ein Empathie, independent Empathie Developer based in Amsterdam. Wenn er nicht reinspricht, dann geht es natürlich nicht. Und er wird uns erklären, wie wir die Rappen zu machen. Oder 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 wie wir die Rappen zu machen. Okay, so I'm here to talk about uh, secure uh, remote firmware updates for the Internet of Things. Um, I'm Daniela Camera. I've been uh, uh, at the uh, last uh, Riot West meeting uh, uh, summit last year in 2018 uh, talking about Wolf SSL and TLS 1.3 uh, support that we uh, were introducing uh, uh, in our pull request. Um, Today, um, uh, I'm here to talk about how we deal with uh, uh, secure firmware updates uh, uh, with uh, um, our users and customers, and uh, how we are going to uh, implement this also in, uh, in the Riot OS environment. Uh, first of all, a short introduction for those who knows, don't, uh, don't know us yet. Uh, the company was founded in 2004. Uh, uh, the main headquarters is in, uh, uh, near Seattle, Washington. Uh, we do have a uh, technical office in Bozma, Montana, uh, where uh, a number of our engineers are normally sitting. Uh, we do have uh, other uh, developers uh, some, uh, in some other states uh, in the US. And uh, then there is uh, uh, a colleague of mine in Stockholm. Uh, you probably know him, Stanley Stenberg, maintainer of Curl. Uh, someone in Brisbane. Myself, I'm based in Amsterdam. Uh, we do have an office in Tokyo. So we are a small but international company. And we focus on providing uh, embedded uh, SSL, TLS uh, library, and other sec uh, security solutions that are related to that. And uh, these are some of our products. Uh, uh, it's probably uh, some of them uh, are already recognizable because uh, we do have already some activity, some development activity in cooperation with the Riot OS community uh, to bring those uh, to, to Riot. And we um, have uh, more than uh, 2 billion connected um, uh, devices secured. Uh, we have a uh, strategic partnership uh, uh, with many of the players, uh, not only in IoT. Um, we just uh, below 40 people working for um, uh, Wolf SSL so far, and uh, uh, yeah, and we, as, as I said, um, we uh, are a company, so we do provide everything uh, as you see here as uh, free software, so released under GPL, and uh, we do offer a commercial a proprietary license uh, for those customers uh, who don't want to agree, uh, who can't comply with the, with the GPL, and that's a dual license. Uh, um, typical dual license uh, business model. Um, what is the TLS uh, library uh, we develop? Uh, it's designed for, uh, for uh, small embedded systems, of course. Uh, it is portable, it is easy to integrate because you it's a uh, transport layer, independent uh, and agnostic, so you can actually uh, uh, integrate it in uh, many different kinds of systems. Uh, we have very mature code base. We existed for more than 15 years now. Uh, we started the project from scratch. At the beginning, it was uh, uh, the idea was to replace OpenSSL uh, in um, in my MySQL project. Uh, that's where um, our CTO and the CEO come from, and, uh, and the MySQL uh, uh, community. Um, of course, uh, we mentioned. Uh, it's, it's portable, easy to integrate, uh, the callback API, and um, uh, it's open source, as I said, it's free, uh, it's in free speech, and we do have a, a pretty fast release cycle. Uh, it's uh, uh, not cadenced like uh, the, the, the Riot OS one, it's more related to uh, vulnerability, so it might be uh, going faster uh, in uh, some specific moments when some vulnerabilities come out especially in the TLS world. Um, the library is made of uh, two main components. Uh, there's WolfCrypt, that's the part that uh, implements all the cryptography algorithm primitives. Uh, um, so basically, uh, it implements it in software, but it can also be used to uh, interface as a driver uh, to secure elements. Uh, uh, so, uh, for instance, uh, hardware accelerators uh, and stuff. And then there is uh, the actual Wolf cell, which is 
providing uh, TLS uh, 1.3 and the TLS 1.2 communication over any existing transport, uh, normally it's uh, uh, TCP and UDP, but it might be anything else. Uh, in, some ca in some cases, some of our customers uh, use the library uh, using uh, um, custom transport uh, layers uh, uh, or even serial tunneling uh, or CAN buses, uh, uh, anything you can think of. But the, the important thing is that we do provide the, se the session authentication layer um, on top of any transport layer for especially for embedded devices, but not only. Uh, the status of the port, some of, the, some of you are already uh, up to speed with this. We do have a PR, PR open. You might notice it's a, it's a low number uh, from those you see today. Uh, but it's actually the third edition. Uh, I think the first PR uh, is two years old already. Um, but that's uh, not bad because uh, in the meanwhile, we were able uh, to improve the support and make it more Riot-like in the sense that uh, uh, now uh, each module uh, can be selected as pseudo module. Each single uh, um, cryptography algorithm can be selected or deselected just by using a, a use module from your make file on your project. And um, it provides two separate macro modules. So if you're not interested in the SSL TLS part, but only you want to do some encryption or signature verification, et cetera, you can just uh, include work script and uh, um, go ahead. And it might be merged in re next release, which is upcoming. Uh, hopefully, it might be merged uh, in these days of, uh, of the summit, but uh, I'm not going to say this too loud because okay. we'll see what happens. Uh, depends uh, on how uh, the reviews are uh, pro pro proceeding during the, the summit itself. And uh, Okay, so what, what's our goal here? Uh, we enable open security standards. So all the security standards that, uh, that we implement are open standards. Uh, most of them are coming from IETF. Some of them are coming from other standardization uh, organizations like OASIS. Um, we do offer transport layer security, but we also do additional components uh, uh, for uh, application level security, such as MQTT, SSH, HTTPS, uh, I'll go a little bit more into detail if I have time on this. And if we do everything well and you implement the latest version of Wolf SSL in your project, then the sec security is delivered. Security in the sense of uh, uh, confidentiality and uh, um, encryption and uh, verification. Everything is delivered. But this is valid for the release day. But we know, and Actually, there was a great panel about this this morning, and uh, that uh, security is not just that, because uh, um, what's, what's microcontroller embedded security today? It's still the world where the environment is completely unsafe. So from the point of view of uh, the, the hardware device itself, uh, most uh, solutions are still based on unsafe paradigms, because they use a flat memory model. We're not an exception here, guys, but that's a bit a trade-off uh, in the market. And uh, it's completely acceptable, but we need to be aware of what we are doing, that any application is capable of accessing uh, hardware um, uh, registers or alter the behavior of the system, while we know that in the normal IT, there's this kernel, kernel uh, space, user space separation that prevents use a space application to touch system-related uh, uh, um, elements. And then, uh, of course, there are physical memory mapping constraints, and it's generally easier to exploit for the, mo for the reasons that, uh, that we've seen also uh, in the panel, but uh, uh, also because uh, um, security constraints uh, are probably added uh, from the first design, and uh, they don't take into account the lifetime, and uh, especially, the um, uh, uh, vulnerability management uh, for these projects. Uh, there is a rush to connectivity, of course. We have so many connectivity uh, technologies available for small devices today. And uh, there is no standard uh, yet for remote updates, except that we know that there's been uh, an effort uh, from SUIT uh, to standardize this. Um, so 
What's vulnerability management? We should use the best technology up to latest standards. Uh, we, uh, uh, the panel mentioned the uh, perfect, uh, perfect forward security uh, this, mor the, this morning, and that's one of the features that uh, uh, is the most important features of, uh, of TLS 1.3. Um, so, but okay, so we can use the latest standards, but also we need to keep stuff updated, and that's the, the core of the problem here. Because even when vulnerabilities are discovered, if they affect your project that's already on the field, maybe it's a, it's a commercial product, and it's already on the field, you should uh, foresee this and uh, foresee the possibility of uh, having a way to update things. So security mode updates are probably now, but will for sure become a security requirement uh, for all IoT connected devices uh, uh, that uh, have to deal with uh, with TLS or with any uh, security implementation that changes in time because it's secure today, but vulnerabilities might pop up next week. Um, so how do we implement firmware updates? Of course, uh, uh, um, after the nice talk of Simon last year at the summit in Amsterdam, uh, we had a look at the suit uh, uh, group work uh, and as as you did, guys, and uh, we progressed a lot on. Uh, uh, on bootloader and firmware updates, uh, especially based on this uh, uh, on this draft, it's probably that's not the latest the latest version, I think. Um, but we uh, we took as uh, requirements the fact that uh, we want to uh, run a minimal bootloader that also has a reliable way to do updates and has most importantly a secure mechanism uh, using uh, public key cryptography to be able to verify uh, the source. Uh, the authenticity and the integrity of the firmware. I mean, you need to be sure that your, your device is upgraded by you and yourself alone and not anyone else or any third party that want to send uh, um, an update to your device. Uh, so these are a bit the project goals. So uh, stay within uh, the smallest footprint possible. Don't depend on any uh, standard libraries. Don't use memory allocations. Uh, uh, we need a reliable uh, firmware update mechanism. Uh, uh, we need uh, fast CPU clock settings. One minute. Oh, wow. Okay, I have a lot of uh, slides here, but uh, probably uh, won't uh, be able. So we wrote Wolfboot, and uh, we run on three architectures. Uh, we are OS agnostic, uh, and uh, yeah. Um, I have a demo with, uh, um, uh, with Riot OS I can show you today on uh, R21. And, uh, uh, the, the most important thing is that uh, probably that uh, with Wolfboot you're able to keep ownership of your keys. So you're the one generating your keys once. The, the public key is uh, embedded into the bootloader and the private key is used to sign the firmware that you compile. And uh, it produces an authenticated firmware that can be authenticated by the bootloader before booting. Um, this is the way that uh, we um, uh, interact with operating systems. Uh, in Riot OS, this is much easier because there is a way through the make files uh, to, to move the uh, entry point of the OS so the, the, um, uh, the bootloader can, uh, can be integrated very easily. So just I have an external package, uh, out of three package for Wolfboot uh, that uses the same uh, concept as uh, uh, Riot Boot and uh, MCU Boot uh, cases uh, to do that. This is the digital signature algorithms we, uh, we offer. And, um, this is just, of course, half of the problem solved because the rest of it is sending uh, an encrypted firmware. So as mentioned already, TLS of the TLS must be used for firmware upgrades at all times uh, because otherwise you just, the bootloader is only capable of verifying the origin of the firmware. But for what concerns uh, transferring the image, it's suggested that you use one of those protocols uh, uh, that runs on top of TLS. So we offer HTTPS, MQTT with secure channel, and uh, SSH, SFTP. And these are probably the next steps, uh, the next packages uh, that are coming to uh, Riot OS when uh, Wolf SSL is, uh, is finally merged. Sorry, I, I was a little bit uh, too fast, but I can give you a copy of the slides if you want. Uh, and we can discuss uh, more about this later. Thanks. If there are any. Michael. Hi, so Michael Richardson. So are you assuming that your bootloader would be part of the image then? 
I didn't understand that part. I thought it would no, be... No, it's, it's a separate image. So uh, it sits at the beginning of the flash, and uh, it's the first stage of boot, and then it's capable of verifying the OS before booting. Uh, hi, Mohit again. Uh, so it's great to see one more library, and I think we, we need... I haven't used Wolf SSL myself, but I plan to do it in the future. Uh, maybe some months ago, I was using OpenSSL for uh, some public key crypto and using ECDH, and then I wanted to get get the public key. And of course, I had to look it up on Stack Overflow on how do I access the public key. And this is what it says, that pass the EVP P key to EC key, then pass the EC key to EC point, and then pass the EC point to point to octet to get, get the characters. Sure. And so, so what I'm trying to say here is the API is so hard. Like, why can't I have, like, I need the public key as, as a character array rather than converting from P key to EC key, EC key to point, and then point to octet. I'm wondering how, how Wolf SSL is trying to address this for developers who, are, who understand crypto, but who are not experts. And just as a funny anecdote, once I did this, then I found another uh, GitHub issue that says for the IETF recommended curve X25519, we don't use this API, so this will not work for that. And they, they have a completely different API for X25519. OK, yeah, I understand. Uh, we do have support for uh, 25519. We do have support for elliptic curves. Of course, elliptic curves are a, a mathematical representation of uh, uh, parameters of a curve. So. There are big numbers that need to be stored that way. But there are standard formats for that, like DER, that can be used to store and retrieve keys. So we have an incredible amount of uh, uh, APIs, uh, uh, both our own APIs and compatibility layers for OpenSSL, because we run also on, uh, on, uh, uh, on Linux systems as a replacement for OpenSSL. Of course, we try to, to keep uh, the, the APIs as uh, uh, easy as possible for, for, for our users, but we're still talking about encryption uh, and uh, elliptic curves, so you still need to know uh, a few basic concepts. Uh, of course, you're not supposed to import uh, an, an elliptic key, uh, curve uh, private key using uh, uh, X, Y, uh, and D. You, you, should, you should just have a format standard like PM or DER, uh, DER to, to, to handle those. I don't know if this answers your question. Hey, thank you. So let's give a big hand. Thank you.